Hello everyone, my name is Angelica Dominic and I'm a trainer here at Pragmatic Works. So recently I was working one-on-one -on -one with a customer who was looking at a sales report that had sales data that was collected over time, they had a date table, they had product, they had customer. Lots and lots of information and different ways to slice and dice and drill down into the data. Well, this user was a newer user and was really looking to analyze their data using certain groups that didn't naturally exist within the data. Now, the user wanted to go through the process of creating those groups manually and entering that data in. And I said, no, 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 hold on. There's a better, easier way inside of Power BI. So that led me to thinking, why not create a video here on the feature grouping and binning inside of the Power BI desktop. So let's go ahead, enough talking about it. Let's head over to the Power BI desktop and take a look at this in action. So here on this Power BI report, I'm using that AdventureWorks data that we love to use. And with this, I just have a sales by country page set up. So the first part of this demonstration, we will go ahead and take a look at using that grouping feature to group our data and then use that within our report and in these visuals that I've currently set up will replace some of that data. The second part, we'll take a look at using the binning feature as well. So here on this report page, what I would like to do is I would like to group some of these countries into their different continents. That way I can say, okay, how were the sales for our North America region, for our North America sales managers, uh, how are they doing for you know this given year? We can do that once we have those groups set up. So we're gonna create three groups here. We're gonna create a North America group, a European group for our European continent, and then for Australia as well. So in order to set up and create groups within your data set, what you are gonna do is you're gonna head over to the right-hand side of your screen and select the data pane. So you can see that I do have on object interaction turned on and I am using that pane switcher. So if your version of the desktop looks a little bit different than mine, that is because I have on object interaction enabled and I am also utilizing the pane switcher. Now, for some reason you have on object interaction turned on and you are wondering where some of these different panes are, you can head up to the view tab at the top and you have the option to choose which panes you want to enable. You can also go in and modify the default settings here for the pane switcher for your Power BI desktop settings. All right. So what we're gonna do here now is over on the sales territory table, I wanna locate the column that I'd like to create these groups for. I'm gonna create the groups here on my sales territory country column because that's where those countries are and where I want to group. So you're gonna right click that column that you wanna create these groups for, and then you're gonna go down and find the option that says new group. So we're gonna go ahead and select new group here now. Now, once we have selected new group, here you have the option to create these groups. First, we'll give our groups a name because otherwise, if we just left it as is, you're gonna see sales territory country a lot within your data. So let's make it a bit easier for us here and let's go in here and rename this group to continents. Now, we can begin grouping the data within this column here now by selecting those regions. So we'll start here first with North America. So I'm going to hold down the control key to select Canada and US, and then I'm gonna select group. You'll notice this creates a new group and it names it just after those, the data that you use to create the group. So if we double click the name here, we can rename this new group to our North America group. We click out of there, that name change is applied. Now back over here in the ungrouped values section, I want to go ahead and create my other two groups. So we'll go ahead now and create that European continent group. And so I'm going to select France, Germany, and UK here now, and then I'm going to select group. Oh, and if you accidentally add it to your previous group, you can just select ungroup here now. 
So you do want to make sure that you do not accidentally do that. So I'm going to select UK, Germany, and France and select group here now. Now we've added this new group in. Let's go ahead, rename this one just like we did that last one there. And I'm going to go ahead and call this Europe. Now we only have one country left that we can use to create a new uh, continent group for. So I'm going to select Australia here and select group here now. We now have that new group. And now we still have a, another field here. We have this NA, this ungrouped values. So there's a couple of things we can do. We could, if we would like, we could just select include other group and that's going to add any of the fields, any of our data that wasn't added to a group into its own separate group. So that will be added there. I don't want this data though, so I'm going to uncheck that. We'll leave this here because I don't want to use this in my data, in my visuals, in my report. There's no sales amount attached to this and a ungrouped value here. Once you have your groups set up, we have our three groups, North America, Europe, and Australia. I'm gonna go ahead and select okay. Now within the table that you created those groups for, you will see that new group with the name that you gave it if you did rename it. If not, this would still be called that sales territory group, sales territory country group there for us. But now we can see it is named continents as we renamed it. So there's a couple of things that we can do with this here now. We could use this in our reports and we could just use this in place of certain columns already in our visuals. We can also use this to create a hierarchy now and allow us to add different layers in different ways that we can analyze our data. So I'm gonna create a continent hierarchy here now and I'm gonna start with the top level of my hierarchy as this continents group we created. So I'm going to right click the continents group and I'm going to select create new hierarchy. Now it's going to rename it after the top level in your hierarchy. You can go in and rename this a bit later. I'm going to leave it for this demonstration for us. Now I would like to go ahead and add the sales territory country and the sales territory region to my hierarchy. So I'll right click sales territory country and now hover over add to hierarchy and select continents hierarchy. I'll repeat this step here on the sales territory region. I'm going to hover and select add to hierarchy. Now, if I expand the continents hierarchy, you can see the three different levels we have, our continents group, the sales territory country, and the sales territory region. Now, what I would like to do is I'd like to take this and replace this sales territory country column here in this column chart with my hierarchy, allowing us to enable drill down and be able to drill into different levels in this visual. So let's go ahead, let's select this column chart here, our sales amount by country, and we're gonna go over to the build a visual pane, and I'm going to remove the sales territory country column, and I'm now going to add in that hierarchy here now. So I wanna add in the whole hierarchy. It's going to open that hierarchy all the way up when it's first added to your visual. All you have to do is hit that drill up button a couple times, and then you will be at the top level of your hierarchy there. Now you can enable drill down by clicking to turn on drill down, and then you will be able to click to turn on and drill into the different fields. Now, one thing to note about your drill down feature, you can click this each time and it's gonna drill into these different levels. Now, one thing you do wanna be careful of that is a little bit different with on object interaction if you have drill down turned on and you have the visual selected and your data points are selected at first, it may be a little difficult to drill into the different levels. So you wanna make sure that you do have that button turned on, otherwise it's gonna be difficult to drill into your different levels. All right, let's go ahead and head over to the binning tab here now and take a look at this next portion. So this is similar to the use case that I encountered with that new Power BI user that I was working one-on-one -on -one with. The customer had some product information, some product data they wanted to analyze by customer age. So originally they had, you know, something similar to this setup. It wasn't this exact data set, of course, but they had a slicer set up with their customers' ages and the products and the product sales amount. So they were able to click into the different ages and analyze the data. And 
they wanted to also look at different age ranges. And so they knew that they could multi-select fields and analyze, you know, customers within the 40 age group to analyze their sales. And they could see, you know, the sales within that group. But it did create, you know, a little bit, uh, it wasn't as good of an experience. And so I informed them that there is a better way. So we can create a similar group just like we did with our continents, but instead here with our customer ages. And so we can create what's known as bins on our customer ages. And then we can use those age bins in different visuals like this slicer, or maybe even to create a histogram using that data in a column chart with the sales amount or some other information if we wanted to analyze our age bins on this report. So we're gonna go ahead and head over to the data pane just like we did to create our continents group. And now I'm gonna navigate over to my customer table and I wanna create these bins on my age column here. So I'm gonna right click the age column and I'm gonna select new group. Now you'll notice here, the groups window looks a little bit different. So we are able to now create a bin instead of a group. So our previous group was created using a list but we really want to create a bin here. So you can create bins to create sizes of bins or number of bins. We're going to select size of bins here now, and we are going to designate our bin size at 10 so that we will see different groups of these bins in groups of 10 years. So we're gonna see a group from 40 to 49 or to 40 to 50, so that range there. So once we have that set up here now, we can go ahead and select OK. And just like that, we now have this age bins here. So what I want to do is on my slicer, I want to replace the age column. So I'm going to remove the age column and I'm going to add in the bins that we created here now. And now look, we can easily go in and say, OK, let's take a look at that 40 range. Let's take a look at the 50 range and the 60, 70, and 80. And we can take a look and see how our sales are doing for each of these ranges here. And we can see that we are definitely doing really well with that 50 age bin. All right, everyone, that's it for this video. Just a quick a beginner level video to help you better understand the features of and the process of grouping and binning your data in the Power BI desktop. If you are looking for more content from us here at Pragmatic Works, be sure to check out our on-demand learning platform where you can find courses on Power BI, Azure, Power Apps, Power Automate, and even a full PL300 review course. Definitely check that one out. If you haven't already, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button below so that you can stay up to date with all of the videos that we post here on our YouTube channel. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And as always, I will see you next time.